recently I decided to clean out this desk. It was a total mess and finally had time to do that. I've been doing amazing uh, at keeping it up because it's been over a week and it's still clean. <laughs> I'm surprised and it's never like that. But uh, during that cleaning period, I came across a box that I put away somewhere and completely forgot about it that was just full of goodies. One of those things was this SSD. This is the device I used to use uh, for my A10 Mini Pro back at my smaller setup. And I recorded so many videos on that thing that I completely forgot about. Some of those jams are so amazing and it feels like I invented a time machine because it takes me back as I'm reviewing these videos and uh, organizing them ready for postings, I remember this day, I remember this case, I remember things that I would have otherwise never even think twice of now. Uh, but uh, I'm so happy that this thing actually still works and there are literally hundreds of gigabytes of footage that is still need to be processed and sorted through. We're gonna start off with the Toshiba SSD today. This is for a local client that brought this device in. Uh, hopefully you guys like this presentation. Some of the things I would have done differently these days, I would have probably tried to fix the device as opposed to swapping, but that was my main to go method back then. And I, I think that was 2021. So uh, before we start guys, hit the thumbs up, comment down below for the algorithm and enjoy the show. Today we're working on yet another solid state drive uh, made by Toshiba. Let's uh, have a look at these uh, two. So the one on the bottom is the one that the uh, client brought us in here in Ottawa. Uh, it's a local case and this is the uh, device that I've picked up uh, from eBay as uh, the donor that we're gonna use. After careful inspection of the failed unit, uh, we can tell that there is a little bit of water damage or liquid damage or some sort that uh, most likely is the reason why it's not working. This device is built only on two NAND chips. Uh, they're right here. These two Toshibas right here. The controller wouldn't need to come out and the RAM would not need to come out. So I think we're good with that. So let's go ahead and uh, pull these two and swap them over to the host, which first we need to confirm that it's functional. Begin testing the device by selecting a proper utility type, M.2 SATA, power on the unit and wait for the ready status lights. Once ready, I usually go and test the device for reading using sector edit feature and tests. If we get access, that means the unit can read its content and uh, we can see that that it's working fine let's run quick express test just to make sure that the reading is consistent and this drive doesn't have any major issues majority of map is green so we're ready to go so let's turn on the fume extraction and get some heat on this thing And I just remembered I'm all out of flux.
in the process I've uh, misplaced some of these capacitors they need to be put back in place all right well, this is what we're looking like now uh, that uh, pads had been cleaned up using a preheater on something like this would be um, something I would recommend the heat from the top is all, all we're gonna have to use for now it does that it, it gets the job done but I, I feel like these chips would come off easily or easier I should say if we had the top uh, and the bottom heated That was, that was quick. All right, so let's do the prep on the chips. So we're gonna need to put new solder in here. Well, we need to put new solder in regardless. It's, it's better that way. First of all, by doing this, we also remove uh, the old lead-free solder and uh, replace it with the leaded. for the time being Alright, now the fun part. We need to create new walls for the um, uh, memory component. And to do that we're going to use a stencil. Alright, lay it down. Get some paste on there and work that paste into the stencil.
let's see. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna give it another uh, heat afterwards, but uh, we're gonna do the second one right now. This uh, flux hardens quickly and uh, round edges it formed a little bulge that it's best to get rid of it because it's gonna offset the uh, stencil won't let it sit flush and um, if that happens some of the base may start leaking and then we're just gonna botch the um, the work if that happens so that bulge had to get shaved down Alright, so a lot of it is now in the alignment. You gotta line them up. We can see it's starting to pull in. First one is set it. All right, so that looks like we're finished. Let's have a look at um, the results. The displacement is pretty even. Let me turn the fume extraction off. We don't need it anymore. I like how the uh, chips had landed. The gap is nice and even all across. Can check the top. Yeah, but it looks pretty well spaced out let's plug it into PC3000 
power on our device and see if we get the ready status. The ready status comes up. Let's obtain the ID using a universal utility and see the, if the ID is going to come up. And it does. Uh, so that's a really good start uh, right there. Test the sector edit. Uh, we get access to the data, guys. This is the very first sector. Let's check the last one. And the last one is also accessible. At this point, we're going to go ahead and open up uh, a task in the um, data extractor and begin cloning the unit out. So all in all, I believe this unit had about 90 something gigabytes of use space out of it. Everything that was on there was cloned and we had absolutely zero uh, sectors left to read. No bad sectors, no unread sectors, no sectors with any types of errors, a complete perfect recovery. Even then, uh, swapping memory was <laughs> such a cool thing to perform because it would instantly take you from a failed device into a working device. You can image it and be totally done with the case. Literally within a day, you could produce all of the data off this drive and the customer would be amazing. And the client would be so happy to get that information back. If you're in the same boat and you lost your data on SSD, flash drive, memory card, hard drive, RAID, whatever it is, let us know. The link in the description will take you to our website where you can request that service. And if you're new to the channel, guys, subscribe and welcome. This is the place to be if you're interested in data recovery. Some very cool announcements I'll be making in upcoming weeks. So stay tuned for those news, guys. I'm on top of my editing game. Things are coming out on the regular. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you all in the next episode.